In a time long ago, there lived in the kingdom of Galamir a sorcerer named Zerok. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. So he raised an army of demons and set out to take the realm for his own. The king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, led the militia in the battle against this unholy horde. Songs are still sung of how he spearheaded the charge deep into the accursed multitude. How demons fell before him like wheat before the scythe. And how at last, though mortally wounded, he destroyed the sorcerer utterly. Fortescue went down in history that day as the hero of Galamir. And a time of peace began, which was to last for a hundred years. And then the sorcerer returned. Oh, oh my. Welcome. Welcome, everybody, to my new Let's Play for Shocktober. Yes, definitely something a little bit different. Oof. That's epic. <laughs> I get the feeling he's up to no good. <laughs> oh, I love the art style in this game. He is busy collecting souls. sorcerer spreading death wherever he goes I like it looks like we need a hero a hero to put things well put things right once again so guys welcome to our spooktober 
event. Now, this game came out last year, and uh, I was going to do this game last year. I was really excited to do this game for last year. Now, if you remember, last year, in October, we had just moved to this house, and we had no internet. And I had no way of recording and uploading. So, this game did not get done last year, but it will get done this year. Um, I've already run through this game um, last year, and this this remake did get a little bit of blowback. People were saying that it wasn't brilliant. Um, I disagree. As a budget remake, it was really good. It was better than the remake on the PSP, which had a load of um, annoyances attached. Let's just say that much. It's a very faithful remake. And for the price that it cost, which was like £20, which, might I add, is one third of what the Mario 3D All-Stars cost. And uh, I would argue that there's a shit ton more effort put into this than the Mario uh, All-Stars, which I actually have the Mario All-Stars. My missus bought it for me. And yeah, it's funny to see how how Nintendo gets a free pass for scraping by and doing the bare minimum. Um, one thing I will say about this game is the controls are a little bit of a pain. Um, the controls haven't been remastered at all, but they do work. It's very faithful to the original, let's just say that. But this game is beautiful on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um, it tries to get to 60 frames a second, and it reaches that mostly, but uh, it's definitely definitely not locked. Anyway, without any more waffling on, let's go for a new game. <laughs> also, I've already finished the game and unlocked everything to 100%, so I've unlocked the special reward, which is the original game. You can play the original game on the PlayStation 4. Oh my, we have all manner of zombies waking up. Well, this won't do. And there is our hero. Looks like Xarox Magic has brought somebody else back to life. Somebody else that Xarox probably didn't want to resurrect. Oof. <laughs> well, he looks happy to be back. Dan's Crypt. Rise and shine, Dan. Looks like you've got a second chance at this whole hero thing. Try not to blow it this time. Huh? Now, we awake once more. It has risen again. Sir Daniel Fortescue. See? The hero of Galomir who fell at the first charge. The fog of war and the shrouds of time conspire to turn the arrow fodder into the savior of the day. But we know it's better. Hmm. Everyone's got a... I'll oh, show you. Yes, we will, Dan. Let it alone. Fate has given it a second chance. A chance to forget the ignoble truth. A chance to defeat Serac and live up to the legend. We hope it does well. Yeah, poor Dan. Everybody's giving him a hard time. Uh, I think it's fair to remember with poor old Dan here. Um, yes, he did f uh, fall in the first charge. Um, he got an arrow through the eye, which is why he only has one eye here. Um, not really his fault, to be honest. Uh, he is the laughing stock of the hero of Galomir world, underworld, I should say. But it's not that just, in all fairness. Right, let's go collect our first life bottle. This will be a 100% run. 
Uh, we will get everything. So, life bottles are extra health bars. Think of them as hearts in Zelda. There is a good few to collect. Star runes are keys. Very important. And here. Here is our sword. And our shield. Copper shield is a bit rubbish, but we will get better uh, shields going forwards. There we go. Right. So we have two weapons that we can quickly switch between. That's quite nice. And we've got our basic sword, which we can also charge. This game is gorgeous. And I really hope this means that uh, for the PlayStation 5, we're going to be seeing Medieval return in its own adventure. Because it deserves it. It really does. During your travels through Galamir, you will collect many items. To see your items or to use one, review your inventory. In it, you will also find your book of Galamir, which will keep a record of the denizens you've encountered mm -hmm. and bestow you with keen insights that only a disembodied voice could provide. Yes. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to be going through all of these things. Um, because these books here are just kind of tutorials. Now, we have Dan's uh, helmet here, which we can put on. Um, and that will make enemies harder. I believe that that was... I believe that was like the pre-order bonus or something. I'm not 100% sure. There we go. He has his helmet on. That makes the enemies harder. I'm not really sure how much harder the enemies are. And we also have the Book of Galomir, where we can learn information here uh, about friendlies, enemies, and bosses, which is really cool. Sir Daniel Fortescue, our boneheaded protagonist, born again into this age of wonders. In life, he was the, just the worst, a coward, a cheat. Wait, hang on. A, a philantist? Or was that a philanderer? I don't recall. But either way, he seems to have woken up uh, different. Perhaps he can redeem himself. Zarok should be more careful where he aims his dark magic. Yeah. Um, everybody's giving Dan a hard time. But, I mean, he was there in the front row, charging with everybody else into battle. Not really his fault he was slain. So... Morton the Earthworm. Morton was so happy when Dan died. Surely, initially, he had a lot of housework to do, but now he's got the place to himself. And just how he likes it. Of course, Dan coming back to life was a bit of a shock. But Morton will do anything he can to keep his buddy safe and get him back to the earthly darkness as quickly as possible. Yeah, Morton the Earthworm, I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, I think that's a reference to the original uh, remake on the I think it was uh, resurrected um, you had the worm in your ear that was constantly talking to you and it, it yeah it just wasn't that funny information gargoyles information gargoyles can you imagine how boring it would be to be a sentient being wise even and be stuck permanently to a brick wall no wonder these guys are grumpy they pass the time by eavesdropping gossiping and bad mouthing any bizarre looking adventurer that might pass by. Enemies, we don't have any. Bosses. Zarok. It is said that Zarok, Zarok's preoccupation with necromancy stems from an obsession to resurrect his childhood puppy. Let's just reflect for a moment. Isn't that tragic? All these poor, troubled soul has ever wanted to do was to command the forces of darkness, enslave mankind, and play ball. One last time. With dear old Mr. Snuffy. Oh, wait! 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 It is said that These could be narrated? Is that new? I don't remember that from when I played this originally. But hey, cool. Okay. Words to the wise. We'll remember that for next time. Now, there is a secret in this place. We can smash that open and get some good shit, but we can't do that just yet. Also, let's have a look. Ooh, 30 FPS lock. That also wasn't there before. Okay. Really, they should have just, you know, got this to um, 60 frames a second. I'm sure that was absolutely possible, but hey. Right, so with Dan's crypt out of the way, we will go back there. 
It's a good place to farm gold and health. But, first things first, we need to go to the graveyard. The graveyard. And we have to get the golden chalices on each mission. Golden chalices will allow us to visit the Wall of Heroes. And hopefully, those heroes will bestow on us something useful. The graveyard. Take your first steps as a hero and slay some helpless zombies. They may seem cranky, but they just woke up from a nice long nap. Hmm. And these guys do not wake up well uh, rested and fresh. Let's just say that. Fortescue. Well done. How's it feel, buddy? Oh, this place looks like hell. Actually, doesn't look too bad, thinking about it. Let's have a nice stroll in the graveyard. Ah, zombies! New Book of Gallomir. Entry unlocks. We have zombies. These guys were fashionably undead before it was fashionable to be undead. No, I see. Your brain may have long since rotted, but that won't stop them from eating it. Just a few chops should do them in. Be careful not to miss. Oh, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't remember the narration being in before. Interesting. Welcome back to your beloved Galamir. The stinking dead have risen up to dance with the life <laughs> And they want to do it over your dead. Body. Yes, well, the sheriff's back in town. Come on, Dan. Now, to get the chalice, we have to fill it with souls. Oh, you can really feel the frame rate there. Oh, my goodness. It's rough. And I think that's the biggest criticism I have of this uh, remake. Like, you know, do 60 FPS or don't. But there we go. Right, let's go kill these guys. Now, there's no, there's no way to be artful in the combat in this game. You just run into the enemies and swing and hope for the best. Like the original. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, thank you. That small light following you around is a wisp. The heroes of the hall are not supposed to intervene in mortal affairs. But when they heard that Sir Daniel Fortescue had a shot at redemption, well, they decided to give you a hand with your death perception. Aww. He will <clears throat> circle enemies, helping you direct your ranged attacks. But he'll also let you know what things might merit a closer. Hmm. Well, that sounds helpful. That's nice of them. We smash as many graves as we can. We can hold circle to charge our blade up as well, which can have its uses. Found the earth rune. Useful. Come on, Dan. Let's go slice some zombies. Hey, friend. What do you think of that? Nice. Let's give our daggers a little go, shall we? Now, these are healing wells. These will refill us with health. Hmm. I bet that tickles. Tickles good. Uh, we need a chaos rune for that. We need to keep our little eyes peeled as well because they can hide gold. We need gold. Right. There we go. So, we have the standard throw, which will just throw very weak daggers to the point of being pointless. Or we can charge them up and throw three at once, which does significantly more damage. Not just three times the damage. It's significantly more powerful, but we're not going to use the daggers because they're pretty useless. Okay. Oh, we have another book. Now, these hands here, if we had the right weapon, we could actually, like, squash them. Uh, we get, like, one gold piece. Or you did in the original. I don't think you did in the remake. Uh, but they're not really worth fighting. And they don't hurt you, so we'll leave them be them. Sometimes it may be useful to view the world from a different point mm. of view. Be sure to take a moment from time to time to enjoy the beauty of our beloved Galamir. Keep your eye peeled for anything interesting. Okay. Disembodied voice sounds good, and yes, this game, this game is rather pretty. What's interesting though is I'm pretty sure they actually teased this game many, many, many moons before it actually released. Uh, clicking the stick in as well hides the HUD. I don't think that was a thing to start with. I think that's uh, something that they've added a new, but it's cool. Anyway, let's go. We've got the rune. Boink. Oh, hey, zombies. I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing they could have got this game 
to 60 FPS. Stable. Especially after playing Days Gone and seeing up to 500 zombies charge you at once. And that held its 30 pretty solid. Right, what have we got from the book? Hidden under the gaze of an angel. Hmm. Okay. If you say so. Well, let's go get our angel friend to help us out. Come on, Dan. Well, we found the chalice. Unfortunately, it doesn't have enough souls. Well, we shall see what we can do about that. Let's get out of here. Yeah, sounds like there's zombies up there. Well, what does this one have to say? The living world lies beyond these skull gates. The master of the hilltop mausoleum, the stained glass demon, has possession of the skull. Does he now? Well, sounds like we're going to have to go kick him in the glass sacks. I'm sure we can achieve that. Right, let's go kill these zombies. Look how cool the zombies look. They really are pretty awesome. Uh, I do want to see more medieval. This universe is funny and wacky. And uh, Daniel Fortescue an interesting character. Now, they did make a Medieval 2 for the PlayStation uh, 1. It was a little bit different. It definitely was a little bit different. Um, I think it was set, not necessarily in modern times, but it, was, uh, it wasn't it was Medieval, I don't think. Many years had passed. Um, I never actually played that properly myself. I did play it with somebody back in the day. Um, but we'll have to have a look at that one at some point. I don't have it in my collection, unfortunately. Right. Now, as for trophies and achievements and all that kind of stuff, I think I've unlocked most of them. I don't think I've platinum in this game. The chalice can now be collected. Excellent. Let's go get our chalice. That will allow us... I like the way you see the souls fly into the chalice as well. It's really cool. Right. Yes, the Hall of Heroes awaits... Excellent. Let's go, Dan. Now, I'm sure you can charge, but we can't charge just yet. There's another health vial. Nice. So, we now have three health bars, which is good. This game can be hard in places. It's not as hard as the original, I might add. It's, it's not on the same level uh, as... The, the original game. The original game was really challenging at times. Um, but this one's not too bad. Now, shop. We've got a shop gargoyle. I love these guys. I love the sound they make. Uh, so, let's see. We can buy some throwing daggers or we can do nothing. Uh, I'm going to buy one load of throwing daggers. We're probably never going to use these, but I just like the animation. He just stuff his money with money. And then we can go out. <laughs> Like, I mean, I'm not sure why he likes money. He's just entombed there on the brick wall for eternity. But hey, man, if, if that's going to bring him some kind of joy, I'm sure he doesn't get too many people crossing the, his path with gold anymore. So we shall help these guys out where we can. Right, and I'm not sure where Dan is hiding up to 250 daggers, but maybe we shouldn't ask too many questions. All right, let's heal up. Now, in the original game, you could return to Dan's crypt to heal yourself. Uh, healing yourself can take a lot of time. I don't think you can in this one unless they've patched it back in. So we're going to be replaying this level a lot to get our health back between levels and where, uh, when and where we need it. But of course, I will be doing that off camera because you don't need to see me replay this a thousand times. Right, found the copper shield again. Cool. Feel free to have a paddle in the shallow water, but don't be tempted to go for a swim. Buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition. Yeah, we swim like a brick. We really do. Straight to the bottom. So we're going to keep Dan out of the water where we can. Right, well, that's the exit to the level there. Let's go top up on health, because... Uh, well, it would be a little bit shitty to leave this health here. Now, these wells only have X amount of health in them. I don't know how much it is. It is a decent amount, but they do dry up eventually. All right, not bad. Not bad, Dan. Tread softly. 
Zarek awaits beyond these gates. Does he now? The master meets with the demon from the mausoleum. Hatching plots of purest evil. Hmm. Forgotten nobodies would be wise to make themselves scarce. Yes, well, good thing for us, we're not a nobody. We're Sir Daniel Fortescue. And we're here to kick our ass and redeem our name. But first, a trip to the Hall of Heroes. All the mightiest heroes are celebrated here, and they aren't so interested in being your friend just yet. Slay a Zarek or two, and they might just change their mind. Or something like that. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity. Feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. Sounds fun. If they think you're worthy enough, you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. Now that sounds good to me. And there's also a shop here. Now, I, I'm not sure if we can uh, keep mining money in this game or grinding out money. I think you can. Uh, in the PlayStation original, I don't think you could. To pay homage to the heroes, stand in front of their designated statues. And await spiritual guidance. Hmm, spiritual guidance, you say? Okay. Now, one thing that makes me laugh about this game is I'm pretty sure the adventure that Dan's going to go on far outweighs whatever these guys got up to. But hey. And there we go. Every chalice we collect will appear here. And you can interact with them and knock them around. I like this. This is really cool. How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold, you could take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire and can ricochet the darts off walls to shoot around corners. I used it for the Battle of Ganymede. After you were slain, I shot Zarek's champion, Lord Kardak. A clean kill through the eye of some thousand guards. <laughs> Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye. <laughs> oh. Goodbye, sir. Yes, Dan's a little bit short with these guys, so... But we have gained Canny Tim's crossbow, which is not a terrible weapon. It's certainly not a good weapon, but it's not terrible, and we'll probably use it quite a bit. Now, these statues are not quite as animated as they were in the original, sadly. Um, in the original game, they, were, they actually came um, to life... And the ghost of the character would actually move and, and talk to you, which I really liked. Anyway, now we have our crossbow. Let's get out of here. Now, we are not worthy of ascending to the second level. Not yet. Only when you are truly worthy as a hero will you be able to ascend to the higher level of this hall. When you have paid homage to all of the heroes in the lower hall, the ghostly stairs will then become soft. I see. Well, don't worry, Dan. You're in good hands, dude. You're in good hands. Uh, you would be in good hands if I could remember how to get out of the Hall of Heroes. Ah, yes. Back the way we came. Yep, we're going to leave the Hall of Heroes for now. Don't worry. We'll be back. And we'll be collecting weapons. Consider a gentler touch with walkways. Damn, the tooltips load. The game loads too quick to read the tooltips. Right. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave our first episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're going to enjoy this game. I know I will. This game is going to be great to go back through. But uh, till then, guys, thanks for watching.